Going through hoops in regard to uh, voltage, regards to frequency, regards to overloads, and so there is all types of just of uh, interconnection relays that basically will shut, you know, shut the panels off and shut the uh, inver uh, inverters off in order to protect their system. So uh, whether it will protect from the standpoint of, the, of this uh, solar effect, I'll be honest, I don't know. But I, I know that, that in regard to what we have to do now in the, in the uh, million or so dollars in order to hook 20 megawatts up, it, it's a significant amount of relay protection on that 34-5 line that goes from here up through to Machias. But but I, I'll 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 pass that on. I mm -hmm. uh, I'll be I'll be quite candid. I've never I've, n I've not heard of that. Yeah. But uh, solar flares obviously I had, but I've not yeah. heard of that. Chrome mass objection is the uh, solar flare on steroids. Okay. Gotcha. Good description. Okay. Other questions. Okay. I'm sorry, Fran. I have okay. one over here. I'll get back to you though. Yes. Your name? Jackie Rose. I live on Rogers Road. Okay. Um, is it rose or rose? Like the flower. Like the flower. Thank you. Okay. What kind of accidents have happened at other grids that might possibly happen in this one? In regard to what kind of accidents can happen on the... Accidents. You know, can something happen, like it will catch on fire, it will you know, do something, like, is there any uh, potential danger or hazards to these? I, I've, not, I've never heard of it, okay. but, but you know, with, uh, if you have wildflowers, <clears throat> wildflowers dry up, and you have somebody up there walking, yeah, I, su I suppose you could have, uh, you, know, uh, you know, a fire. And of course, that's one of the things about the permitting, is that we will be talking with the local fire department here in regard to access, in regard to being able to get inside the fence, whether it's midnight or during the day, in order to prevent an event like that. But based on my experience, I've, I've not heard of, uh, you know, of, of that type of a, in, in fact, it's probably much less a catastrophic accident or a fire than it is at a power plant that burns coal, natural gas, or, or a nuclear plant. <coughs> yes, Fran, I'm sorry, I, I promise to get back to her and then I'll get to you, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, will someone be maintaining this? Like, in other words, will somebody be there on a regular basis? No. There will be a, uh, a maintenance group mm -hmm. that comes in, uh, depending upon, it, particularly if you have a storm, you know, with some of the wind storms we've had, yes, you will have, we will have a, a uh, maintenance. We, with, the, with the two projects, Martin, uh, Martin Road, hopefully, here hopefully, uh, we're working on one up in uh, Niagara County, uh, and we have uh, a project out in Pennsylvania, <coughs> and so there will be, you might say, a roving maintenance group, and also there'll be all types of instrumentation and uh, communication set up for this group, so that in case there is a uh, maybe somebody, uh, uh, there'll be there'll be cameras, so if we have an intrusion or something, they'll be notified, and uh, and also the uh, the local police department will be notified in case there is a, an intrusion. And you'll likely have signage on the fence that says yep. contact if there's an issue, um, as well as mm -hmm. contact information with the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Lady in Green, now it's your turn. Um, obviously, you know, maintenance and security of the facility, you're talking about high voltage here. Is there going to be any lighting? And I'm sorry. Be There'll be lighting <coughs> at, the, at the fence, at the uh, gate. At the gate. Yes. Around the plant? No. Okay. And I'm sorry, could you give me your name? Oh, I'm sorry. Laura McLeod. I'm sorry? Laura McLeod. Okay, thank you. Um, things like that issue are things that, uh, as a town board, we're, that's what we want to get into laws. Yes. You know, lighting, staffing emergency training for the fire department yep. contact information uh, what do we what do we want to see underneath these panels mm -hmm. um, those are all considerations so as this is what we're learning about that's why there's a moratorium because we want to collect these thoughts the, this kind of information mm -hmm. we're looking at other town laws as Lori said as well because uh, there's there's great ideas out there 
for anybody who's traveled <coughs> to Olean recently off of 86 on the right hand side mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of panels I don't know how many I have called Olean to ask them how many did you put in there because I'd like some sort of comparison to what we're looking at I have a feeling it's minimal compared yeah. to what we're looking at. <coughs> two acres of panel there. It's two acres long? <coughs> okay. I'm guessing, just looking at it, I would guess it's yeah. okay. about two, maybe three acres. Yeah. But they also have some sort of, it looks to me, um, but it was a quick drive by, <laughs> um, some sort of a black um, fabric. You like a fabric or um, landscape a landscaping fabric. type of thing underneath there. And I'm not certain of the reason for it. Maybe it's to keep up weeds from growing and, you know, that type of thing. Maybe that was their way to control what comes from underneath there. I don't know. But those are the questions that we'll have of them also is to get back in touch with them and say, tell us what you did exactly. Because they give us their rules and regulations, but it doesn't mean that it says everything in it that we need to know. Um, just a comment mm -hmm. um, on thin film, and I hadn't thought of it just uh, until a couple seconds ago, because mm -hmm. I've never thought of putting this type of pro uh, uh, process in. With thin film solar panels, you can bend them. So you could actually get your morning and evening uh, rays. You just have to build the array, not perfectly south, but let's say 10, 15 percent of your panels if they were you can actually bend it <coughs> and you can bend it towards the east mm -hmm. the other thing uh, I worked four years in England and the big landowners they're fencing their property and then on the inside they do a diversion ditch all the way around the deer can jump in they can't jump out so if you do a, a diversion ditch all the way around your perimeter, deer will not be able to go up and over mm -hmm. your fence. Mm -hmm. All around the outside? On the outside, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they can't get in. They, they do it in England <laughs> on the inside so they can't get out and they can hunt them. They can hunt them. I have a question. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm Paul Jewett, mm -hmm. 3246 Baker Chain Road. How about electrical interference uh, to television? To no, no, Mr. Jewett, no, you will not. You no. won't have it. No. Not even when you're converting from AC no. to DC, no. or DC to AC. No, mm -hmm. no, you will not have it. No, sir. Categories. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. no. Thanks for asking that question because I had that on my list today. So mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, but let's delve into that a little bit more, Paul, okay? Um, you and the Grimes family will be the people probably most affected by, mm -hmm. by the construction yeah. and by the continuation of the program. So um, <coughs> we want to know as far as the use of the road next to your property. Yes. And all of those type of things. Is that what you had in mind, yeah. Greg? Okay, Greg, yeah, go cool. further then and, and help me out here. <laughs> you Greg have. Grimes, Baker Stanton Road. Okay. We're representing Richard Grimes. And okay. the Jewett School, because they live down in front of us. Yeah, so. they do. Mm -hmm. How do you plan on getting to that property? How do you plan on, on Is getting it a joint to driveway, <coughs> a shared driveway? What we, would, uh, what we would do is come up. What's it? Uh, I should remember the road number. Uh, Vernon Drive. Vernon yeah, Vernon. Drive. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so <coughs> we would. Uh, that would be. We'd have. Pro we we work with the town in order to get access to the uh, uh, to the laydown area, and we would we would look at probably uh, putting access off of Baker Stanton Road. We can come up here, you know, off of uh, uh, the shared uh, the shared driveway be between uh, your driveway and uh, Mr. Jewett. And, uh, and who's going to maintain it? Huh? Oh, we know. will. We'll maintain it. Who's okay. going to plow it in the winter? Yeah. We will plow. I'm not plowing it for you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, in order to that. make sure that the fire department has to uh, has to get into our facility, you know, we we will do the uh, the plowing yeah. and we will do the maintaining of the road and then also there's going to be uh, 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 during the construction there'll be some drainage. So we will maintain the drainage to make sure it does not go into uh, Mr. Jewett, Mr. Grant property, but we will do all of that. And again, I think this is something that you folks can, you know, 
Uh, I have seen it in other ordinances in regard to both construction and operation and in regard to the access road, uh, particularly for the fire department and the police, so that uh, essentially if there's any activity here that's detected by our cameras or uh, if there's a, would, would have to be a fire, therefore, you know, it has to be opened. And so we'd basically be hiring, you know, uh, somebody to, you know, a, a local plow, uh, plow operation to do it. And again, this will probably, I think, be spelled out in the ordinance that we have to abide by and live by. Mm -hmm. And so that, um, okay. I'll get to you. I want to continue on this if I can. Um, so that brings up the fact of construction. And so I'd like Lou to talk a little bit about what is involved in the construction, what type of trucks will be coming in, right. how heavy is the equipment, that type of thing, if you have. Yeah. Uh, Probably the most, the, the, uh, the construction aspect from the standpoint of entering the site <coughs> uh, the, would be, let's suppose we make use of these, of the, uh, uh, well, we will utilize uh, basically flatbed trucks bringing in the panels. The panels are in, are in uh, cardboard, very big cardboard cardboard and mounted inside the cardboard with uh, uh, wood, you know, wood mounted. And so they will be stacked in here, but they will be brought in by tractor trailer. And so uh, into the lay down area. Uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the ground that we have here that hopefully we'll own, uh, that will be cleared, you know, with bulldozers and also uh, brush hogs. Uh, from the standpoint of clearing the secondary growth. So there will be dust, there will be dirt, there will be uh, uh, noise, but again, this will fall under, okay, when are we allowed to work? Can we work all 24 hours? No, no. I've never seen anything like that. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. But can we work from the daylight hours of say seven to seven? That, that's that's what, what we've seen in the past. From the standpoint of dust control on, these, on this road, on the entrance road that goes up to uh, you folks' property, yeah, we'll have, we'll have to uh, wet that down and keep it wet so that we have to take care of the dust control. Now so, that road goes up all the way up and around and comes down. Yes, it does. Where our driveway comes out. Yeah, yeah it comes down, the, uh, it comes up and around, and it comes down on your driveway. Right. And um, you were and, up there today. Yes, I was. We I saw you drive. Yeah, I was showing the uh, young lady. <laughs> and uh, so we would, uh, uh, that would not be used. That, that essentially would be uh, cut off. Right. That's correct. Because down in front of that house is a sluice pipe. You take anything heavy across there, you're going to collapse that sluice pipe. Yeah, you would. Sure would. Yeah. yeah. So that will not be used. Okay. Not at all. Good. To continue on. Sure. The fencing. You're going to basically fence all the way around Richard Grimes' property and all the way around that. So you're basically putting him in jail, so to speak. Fun building to say it is. Right? You're, you're going to have to put a fence yeah. completely around this whole thing. Right here. So it's, uh, <coughs> yeah. if it's north. Actually, no. It's what north of Mr. of uh, Mr. Jewett's property. And the fence right. will come up here, around, okay, and would come down, and again, come down here. This property line here, and uh, so it would it would be around. Yes, it would be right yeah. now. The way this is designed, yeah. it yeah. would be around your property. But you would you would have access to Bakerstown through your drive. To, you know, yeah. Now maybe this is something that might fall out doing the final design. Right. You know, and we'll share that with you. And the fact that you know, uh, actually, th this road in this area in here. We're maintaining it uh, with, uh, and this is what uh, Mr. Niles, where Mr. Niles is, uh, is, is doing the lumbering. <coughs> but to me, and again, if this falls out of the hearing and the concerns, then there's no reason why we can't just simply bring it in here and down, and therefore this would be wide open to, to you folks. So I think it's a very good point, and uh, I think you've got to watch the design of it. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Because you've basically, if you put this up, you just took the value of his property in his house to nothing. Basically yeah, nothing. Yeah, is that going to change the value, value of the property or anything? Mm -hmm. Of Jewett's or I'm his? I'm sure it will. 
I'll, I will, uh, I'll show you a study that was done out of Stanford University. <laughs> That's that, how to answer my question. Yeah. <laughs> Based on what I, I have, uh, I've worked on nuclear plants. I've worked on coal plants. Based on studies up in Minnesota on a 1,000 uh, acre solar. No, I have not seen that ever happen. Now, will it happen here? I don't know. I'll be honest with you, I do not know. So you're, you're, She's not, she's not writing fast enough. <laughs> it's okay. What about the wildlife? I mean, he moved there mm -hmm. for the wildlife. Mm -hmm. They don't care about it. Now, there's nothing. You're not going to have anything. The, well, no deer, no nothing. Within that, wild within that area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the conservation club and was also that concerned. There's a lot up there. Yeah. yeah there I mean, is a lot yeah. there. I don't know. I'll bet you money you haven't walked that property. Mm -hmm. Pardon? You haven't walked that property, have you? Yes, Actually sir. walked the whole thing. Yes, walked sir. the whole thing? Clear up to the state. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thanks. Dave Zelker and I have walked it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have boots on? But that's, <laughs> I got stuck. <laughs> I got <laughs> stuck. But that's where I believe that your group has to do the study, correct? Well, yes. There's, there's certain levels of study that we would do depending on what the impacts, what, what desktop impacts there are, and what what we see when we really formally walk the site. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we would, it, it just depends. Mm -hmm. But you, your group does impact group, on wildlife? Our, yes. Our, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Going yeah. back to impacts on wildlife? Yes. yes. We, we look yep. at that. But, yes. but as I was showing you, the level of detail or analysis that is undertaken will depend on the, the type of action that it is. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, our group does do environmental assessments and impact on wildlife. We look at fragment fragmentation. We look at, you know, if it's a temporary impact, if it's a permanent impact. Mm -hmm. um, so we do look at those things. <coughs> and just to add a little bit to what you guys are talking about home values, um, in Portville, they did put in, I want to say it was a five acre farm, but don't quote me on that. It might have been 10. I, we've seen so many numbers lately. Um, but what happened was there was a gentleman who had a house that he had recently purchased for quite a nice sum of money and they put this next to him and he first agreed to it but then um, he had to move and he found that he couldn't sell his home and it was just because the amount he wanted was what he paid for it and the people who were looking at it now said it's a sight line so what, that's our major concern is what is the sight <coughs> line what does it look like um, let's face it, I'll introduce, you know, John is the owner of um, Triple R Campground. Right. So he has a sight line that directly comes over and there's a, a section of trees and that prevent, will prevent his campground from being able to see these panels. However, when the timbering was happening, um, someone called me. <laughs> well, I was with Greg. <laughs> oh, okay. I that's that's what happened. Right. Yeah. So I got a call. I immediately <coughs> called for Lou and for um, Mr. Zilker, and I said, somebody's taking timber out of there, and the if it affects the sight line for an industry that we have in our town, that's a concern. It's also a concern if it affects all of you for a sight line. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what we're looking at, too, because this gentleman in Portville called me, and he said, I know the studies show that it doesn't impact, but right now I'm being impacted. But keep in mind, it was right next door to him. Well, so, yeah, I. Be in the backyard. Yeah, but I'm saying, um, Greg, it was facing towards his house. Okay, okay. so it, his south view was where his home was basically. So it was poor placement, and uh, again, he had agreed to it up front because he said he believed in, in green energy, but it impacted him in, in this this short term. So, um, if I can, I don't want to. Ignore you. So, can you help me with your I name? Just made a comment on, I just heard a scientist say <clears throat> that uh, this uh, solar energy it actually does hurt the environment. And on top of this, I'm here saying what panel you would have to use. Uh, you need more to generate the power you want to generate, and that would take more land. And you say. Uh, well, you have a fence then with cameras. And then we're going to do a trail for so and so to go through. I, I, I don't believe in the corporation saying that at all uh, to anyone. And, and, uh, and the, you're going to use more land. And 
15 years, all of your grandkids' grids are, are, are going to be certified by this project because this is just eliminating the, all the, uh, the farming here, the morals here, and I don't know if this is going through already, but if we got a fight to say no to know, all of this, we're getting pushed out. <clears throat> and I'm sorry if I ruffle any feathers, but this this is <clears throat> this is not helpful. This is actually hurting us, and they're going to give us, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the all the good things about it. Well, that gentleman maybe heard that his house wasn't going to get devalued. Mm -hmm. Well, now his house is devalued. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Let's get in the let's get in the door, and when we get in the door, we change it. I, I, I won't see you guys as friendly as these guys as neighbors with your fences and your cameras. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think for, you know, uh, and I think it's, the meeting is good because, you know, obviously we need security, mm -hmm. obviously we need fences, obviously we need uh, lighting, mm -hmm. uh, the recreational aspect is still, is still going to be strong because of the snowmobiles, and obviously as a result of the input of these folks, we're going to see that in the form of an ordinance. Mm -hmm. So we want to build this. We have to actually adhere to what's going to come out of this meeting. Secondly, you know, from the standpoint of energy, um, nobody likes nuclear. You know, you know, I worked most of my life on reactors. Mm -hmm. Nobody likes coal anymore. They're shutting down a wonderful 875 megawatt coal plant up in up in Barker, New York, because Mr. Como does not want it, want it anymore. Okay. Second, and, and then, and then, and then, and then the uh, uh, natural gas, yeah, the cheapest natural gas that you folks are burning in your house, and that is coming from Pennsylvania through fracking. Nobody wants that. So we want renewable energy. But I can tell you this: I have four kids. I've got nine grandkids. They use more energy now in the form of video games, in the form of of uh, iPads, in the form of uh, computers that I ever used or even thought about using when I was their age. So what are we going to do? No nukes, no coal, no natural gas, mm -hmm. and so what do we do? Mm -hmm. the no, no uh, and maybe maybe uh, Doug there, where is, I believe your first name was, mm -hmm. maybe that's going to happen. Maybe maybe mm -hmm. we'll end up with the uh, solar flare, a super solar, solar flare on, on steroids, mm -hmm. so maybe we won't have any electric. Mm -hmm. well, the nuclear you're talking about is, is nuclear Everyone thinks nuclear is like a bomb. It's not all, consistent always in a bomb. Uh, nuclear is actually proven to be more efficient, but because of the name and, and, and how it's referred yep. to, we don't study into it more. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> the thing is, is the more you use these panels, the more in plan you are going to take, and the more community is going to be lost. Mm -hmm. The community is going to be lost. I, I care about my kids. I care about my kids' future. I don't care about me now. I care about my kids and my grandkids' futures. Mm -hmm. I'm not caring about me now. Yeah. I'm caring about the futures of my kids and my grandkids. Mm -hmm. Can you can you help me with your name, sir? Uh, Brendan Naughton. B R E N D A N Naughton N E U G H T O N. Oh, I recognize you now. <laughs> okay. I think it's it's a very important perspective that you're providing. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to always be fully supportive, um, but I think the goal right now and moving forward is to to share and to, and to inform um, and to, to get feedback. So um, I don't think that Mr. Right. Bailey is over committing to anything mm -hmm. necessarily. I think that any project that you undertake, whatever development it is, there there is an impact, right? There's an impact on environment because you're taking some land mm -hmm. um, whatever whatever it is so whether you're building a pool um, so I don't think the idea the idea is not to commit that there's no environmental impact the idea is to look at how to minimize whatever impacts there are and balance those against the needs of the, the broader needs the goals of the state the funding source that is available some of the benefits that might be available to your town so it's a balancing act um, but I hear you. Mm -hmm. I do hear you. I'll just respect mm -hmm. it's Colombo Como saying we ought to do this in 2020. Mm -hmm. If we say no to this now, we stop this now, we can stop this and and, and go how we were going. 
in the right direction. Well, I think renewables, it's, it's a renewables as a whole. So, I mean, there are people who don't like wind energy. There are some people that will say wind energy is helpful. So there are a lot of different ways to look at how to meet those goals. Mm -hmm. um, but we have now is, is a potential opportunity that, that goes beyond just the opportunity for Mr. Staley and Olive Wood, right? It's, it's an opportunity to, to potentially reduce, I, I don't want to speak to the commitment yeah. here, but yeah. you know, there, there are other opportunities available. And um, so, so I don't wanna, I don't wanna get too, too mm -hmm. deep in the weeds on it, but, mm -hmm. but I think what, what I know that they're committed to doing and the town appears to be very committed to doing in, in this moratorium and in the ordinance is to evaluate the best way to go about this should they go about this? So this is right. a done deal. Is no, no, it's not. I'm, I'm saying the opposite. No, no, it is not. I'm saying the opposite. It is not. That's the, start. That's the this is to get the input yep. as they decide whether or not mm -hmm. to lift the moratorium mm -hmm. and to, to pass an ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh, the ordinance could say, and I, I wouldn't put words in your mouth, I haven't mm -hmm. drafted a solar ordinance, could say no fencing. You know, yep. but some people say they want fencing. So mm -hmm. the ordinance could say, not you, you can't have 10 foot fencing, you have to four foot fencing. So it, mm -hmm. it's it's like anything that you would come to your town planning board meeting or town board meeting and, mm -hmm. and comment on whatever project it might be. Right. So right. Um, and it's not to give you all the answers now, but that's right. where it seems like. And you're right. exactly right in the fact that the reason for this meeting is to get the input from people, good and bad, because people have feelings about this. And that's what we want to hear is what are your feelings about it? What thoughts do you have? What what will make it easier for you if we decide to go mm -hmm. ahead? What what do you say, no, we can't do that possibly? So all of these options have to be explored. And as I said before, there's only five of us. And the more heads that are put together, the better the ideas and, and things that happen. Chris. If this goes through, mm -hmm. how long will it take to do this? How long will it take? Yeah. It'll, it'll, take, more, it'll take more time to permit it than it will to build, build it. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll be looking at uh, I would, uh, 19 and 20 to, uh, at, at the end of 2020 to, uh, I would say, get all the permits. Uh, it could be earlier, but I would say that probably we would be able to uh, hopefully start it up late 2020 or early 2021. So you're thinking it's probably a construction period, though, about yes. how many months, yeah. about six months, maybe? It would yeah. be the construction period at the Probably, I would, say, uh, I would say probably nine months to build it. OK. And you're talking about this landing where they might, oh. you might store the stuff when you bring it in? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that where they just put the gas line in it? That's correct. That, that's also the narrows. Mm -hmm. That's what we call the narrow yeah. area. Right. It's, uh, That's a swamp land right there. It's steep also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is all just, is, go ahead. Sorry. If you don't have an access road for that, a separate one other than the joint driveway, yeah, it's really narrow. I'm not going to sit and wait for a truck to get out of my way to get home. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had like trouble the gas with company? the gas company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, the road is like mud at the bottom of that driveway now. Mm -hmm. If you start taking semis or whatever up that road, I know you say you gotta maintain it, but you ain't gonna maintain it every time you take a truck up and down. We'll, we will rebuild the the, uh, the road itself. We'll rebuild it in order to handle the temporary movement of uh, panels and equipment uh, up the uh, up this joint road. or we will work with the town, get a permit to build a road into the uh, uh, into the laydown area. So that that's our tour. Uh, uh, our but, but if we use that joint shared road, it will be rebuilt. Okay. So what you're saying is the laydown area is going to be on the top of the hill, above. I think we down by the road. It'll be about. It'll be about si uh, It'll be about half. Uh, it'll be yeah. in uh, parallel with Mr. Jewett's. It'll be uh, right here, uh, Mr. Jewett's. Is right here, right? But, but that'll be, and then that'll be reseeded, oh re uh, work. I mean, that's a that's a hill, right? Yes, there. it is. Yeah. So you're going to lay down on the hill, not at the top of the hill. This here with this this here right above here, right here, and then as it goes up to here, it gets flat. So the trucking will come into here. We'll have a uh, high lift or a small crane to pull out, to uh, uh, unload the trucks, and most of the uh, most of the equipment will be in the top of that. Plateau, right at the top of the plateau there. It's a very wet area. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. This is all preliminary. Right. This is all right. conceptual. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to get out there and look at it. Yeah. They're not going to, I, I wouldn't think they'd make yeah. a choice that would compromise. And at that, at that point, too, when they're doing these studies, our hope is that they'll involve this board so we can go with them and take a look and see for ourselves because we don't, we don't go up there. I mean, <laughs> it's private property. We don't access that. Um, a couple of things I want to bring up just to get your feedback is um, the first one is um, we talked about the visual impact. Um, we know that it's black. Uh, we know that it won't provide glare. Um, but the, the issue of where it, where it goes to now, when we first talked about this, Lou, did you say that they were motorized and would move? They could have been. They could have been. But the gentleman Doug is Three correct. the cost. Okay. You will we'll, we'll yeah. never recover the cost of... He is absolutely that, right. In, okay. In, uh, in Arizona or Florida, you would. Yes. we would absolutely be building a uh, uh, variable. Okay. This is going to be fixed. Okay. And originally when we talked, um, we talked about a 20-year time plan and then renewal and to 40 and whatever. Um, and also the fact that the equipment may be replaced at that time as the technology grows. But what I am concerned about is sustainability for the future. And let me give you an idea. Um, anybody who's ever been down to uh, the Outer Banks, there used to be a giant dump in the Outer Banks. Can you believe that on the edge of it? Um, where it, beautiful, beautiful area, but they needed a place to put a dump. So they put it there, and it was access to the ocean. It was off the main road, but it was still there. Well, they agreed with the company that put it in that when they left the area, that they would build a dome type of thing to it, and they would up, um, up the land. They would uh, <laughs> build a berm on the land, and now it's used like a sledding area with sand on it. It's a recreational area. Now, true, the, it's a dump site underneath, but they had to cap it, and they had to put the sand, and now you can actually go up there and sit on a little sled and go down there and just have a great time. So our concern as a board, as you were talking about, Brendan, is 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, when we're not here, what can it be used for? Um, so when we're talking about where the snowmobile trail goes through, can we ask that that's a walking trail someday because of the access to the school, to, because of the access to other areas? Um, this board has talked about working with the county to make a walking route up to Case Lake. How can we provide all of that for, you know, for the future? Um, so those are things that we're going to be considering when we talk about the moratorium is what's the future use of this land? And no one else, no one has asked the big question that we've struggled with as a board is decommissioning. Yeah, that was my question. Okay, so what happens, and I'll ask, I'll ask Lou to, to deal with that. Um, <laughs> isn't that nice I direct sure, that to you, Lou? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> but um, something has to happen if they decide 20 years from now that it's no longer an efficient operation and it's torn down, what happens? And so... Yeah, okay. First of all, uh, you will have uh, uh, a, an immediate walking area mm -hmm. because as the snowmobile uh, trail comes across and enters our property outside the fenced area but still be our property, mm -hmm. uh, that will be obviously cleared and uh, so you, you'll, you'll still be able to walk up okay. there. Okay, okay. There's no doubt about that. And, and then... Well, that's what I was going to say. That well, would it be considered get off yeah. of the edge of that? Yeah, that that's a different yeah different. Concern. Yeah. So it would be considered your property that yeah, we would have access we, to. Yeah, but then if we're gonna, if we're going to give it, let the snowmobilers use it, mm -hmm. then and they groom it, mm -hmm. and if you can actually see where they've groomed it, you know, uh, right now because mm -hmm. uh, up there, then uh, you, you'll be able to go out. You'll be able to walk up there. You have to jump the mud and, mm -hmm. and uh, things like that, mm -hmm. but you'll be able to walk up there. Now, in regard to decommissioning, good question. Okay. 